first the introduction of chest trauma so basically whenever there is a trauma impacting to the to the chest is very common and mainly leading to life threatening situations the patient deteriorate very uh, early and identification is not very tough to uh, do in emergency basis basically treatment of these patients is very very important as i said these patients deteriorates very uh, quickly okay so the uh, major uh, anatomy of uh, chest which got impacted is first our lungs heart and the major uh, vessels okay so these are the basic things which got impacted in chest trauma that we are going to discuss today so what are the main causes of uh, those chest traumas are can be a blunt trauma to the chest direct injury by any uh, road traffic accident any compression over the chest during that period any force of acceleration and deceleration uh, trauma that means the, the, for example if you're sitting in a car you just got hit uh, by an another uh, one second just give me a minute yeah so uh, when you're sitting in a car and uh, you suddenly put a brake then your just give me a minute i'm so sorry yeah so where were we sorry yeah so you are in a car and uh, riding on a speed uh, of approximately 60 kilometers 20 kilometers suddenly uh, you see somebody in the front just took a sudden break and you try to put a break suddenly then your body is going to be in a acceleration phase but your car stopped quickly in that way you just go forward and at that time you can hit the chest to the uh, steering wheel as well so in these kind of scenarios you got these kind of injuries now there can be a direct injury by penetrating trauma uh, by stab injuries you can say or a compression injury that means that something uh, is majorly fell down on your chest directly can cause these kind of impacts okay now what are the injuries that can be life threatening uh, first we're going to discuss all these injuries step by step that can be open pneumothorax that can be tension pneumothorax flail chest cardiac tamponade traumatic aortic rupture there can be diaphragmatic rupture as well which can lead up to life threatening injuries we will deal with all these uh, uh, injuries uh, one by one <clears throat> so now coming at open pneumothorax so what happens in pneumothorax basically pneumo uh, this is a pneumothorax where the chest cavity gets opened up that means uh, for example in a penetrating injury somebody stabs in a chest which makes a port to enter into a pleural cavity directly so in this the opening in chest cavity that allows air to enter in the pleural cavity it causes the lung to collapse due to the increased pressure in the pleural cavity obviously when there is uh, basically pleural uh, pleura is basically a covering of the lung when there is more air in the cavity then it compresses the lung to the opposite side it can cause it can uh, be life threatening and can in these patients can deteriorate early because when there is compression on one side of the lung it can collapse make the, that lung collapse and the mediastinum can also shift to the opposite side now what can be the sign and symptoms as in this uh, picture we can see this is the lung this is a pleural cavity okay and here if there is any opening if a person get stabbed over this side then there is an open entry and the uh, air get trapped here so it compresses it slowly compresses the lung as compared to this side there is lung which is fully inflated and here there is a, a lung which is getting compressed now at this point of time we can see in this picture the trachea is center and there is no such mediastinal shift but after a while if this air get increase more and more so the lung will get collapsed maybe 
like this or you'll not be able to even appreciate that side of the lung and the whole side including the trachea got shifted to the opposite side so what can be the signs and symptoms of the open pneumothorax there can be breathing difficulty that is dyspnea there can be sharp sudden pain in the chest as there is an open entry uh, there can be some cutaneous emphysema as the, as well because the air get trapped in the subcutaneous tissues as well now decreased lung uh, sounds on the affected side that means if the lung left side is affected there will be decrease or no air entry on the left side there will be red bubbles on, on exhalation from the wound if there is any sucking wound is there then you can see the uh, bubbles uh, formed because the air is also with the blood now what we can do to treat all these patients as we say in any trauma patient our abc is more considerable thing that is airway breathing and circulation in these patients airway is not compromised but your breathing will be compromised as the patient is having breathing difficulty can lead up into uh, metabolic acidosis later on because of the stress now abc uh, is the mandatory component airway has to be patent or if not then we have to make sure that we ensure a safe and a patent airway now breathing is the next component and then the circulation we will deal step by step with all these components and along with that airway always comes with c spine control that we have to stabilize the cervical spine in every patient then as the patient is having breathing difficulty uh, we will start on oxygen support with high flow oxygen in these patients uh, if you have a back mass ventilation continue with that if you do not have then you can continue with non breathing non re breathing mask as well then for then you have to listen to the uh, lung sounds then you can uh, listen to both the sounds that's how you compare that which side is okay which side is affected or the both the sides are affected that you can check most of the times there can be a possibility that both of the sides are having uh, pneumothorax in trauma patients then in these patients there is one thing that we can do uh, different from the other patients is that we can do occlusive dressing so in occlusive dressing what we do we dress from the three side like if they, this is a wound so we will cover it by three sides and we will keep its one side open okay so by this what we want to do in uh, open pneumothorax what happens the air enters in the chest and it comes out also but not that much now when we have put up a dressing over any wound so the air cannot go in from that wound but as we have kept one side open of our dressing whenever the patient will try to expire the breath then there will be air come out from that one side and there will be no air entry into the pleural cavity but he will be expiring um, as he expires then the air will come out from that one side of the dressing which was open or there are nowadays there are uh, dressings coming up with one ball one sided ball in which the air will not get entered in the chest but it can come out from that ball well now airway control as i have told you either uh, you have to start with high flow oxygen if the patient is still not able to maintain it he's having high respiratory rate you are seeing metabolic acidosis in an abg then it's always better to go ahead and ventilate the patient as soon as possible and in these patients why we are saying these patients can deteriorate quickly because as the mediastinum shift started they uh air in the cavity increases so it will con convert into tension pneumothorax and this will compromise the hemodynamic uh make the patient hemodynamic unstable so we have to make sure that we uh, deal with uh, this patient quickly the uh, uh, major thing that we do is occlusive dressing in these patients now uh so i was telling you guys that there is a one valve uh, dressing as well so in these patients if there is a wound like this here so here we will be having a valve and in which the air and air does not go in the cavity but it can allow to uh, make the uh, carbon dioxide come out <laughs>